All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link uh, immediately. And don't forget to download the video as soon we finish, as soon as it is available for download. Today our topic, one of you post a comment saying, where Allah is coming from? That's a very good question, actually. And this is a, this is a, this is a question which uh, sometimes, even me, with all what I read, uh, sometimes it makes me dizzy. Uh, because, you know, Islam is not just a religion um, like others. Islam is a collection of religions. So, and because of the nature of this cult, which is a mix of many, many, many stories, it's hard to trace really where this cult is coming from. However, Based on Islamic stories, I'm not going to go to a historian because Muslims will say we don't believe in those historians anyway. So why I want to waste my, my, my time and talk about things they themselves they don't believe in. However, Muslims themselves, they cannot deny what is written in their books. And the second they start denying what is written in their books, it is the same second they are out of Islam. Even they did not say we are out of Islam yet. So, in the Quran, you will find that everything you find in those fiction movies, you find it in those in this Quran. So we have God, who is Almighty, supposedly. But does God? He have a magic stick. He have a ring, which is a ring of magic. This God, uh, he sent a beast, and this beast have many features. Uh, this piece is going to make every human being either black or white depend on their religion if you are a Muslim Allah will make you white if you are non-Muslim Allah will make you black uh, There is a there is a the, the beast as an example at Jassasa which is uh, going to come from the ground and This beast will uh, Will be super powerful, but he's an animal Yet this beast is something we never saw like before have a very weird description which is a collection of all animals in this earth and then we have uh, versions who they are waiting for us in heaven and those versions are so beautiful and they have to be very white for sure because those are made for the Arab who they are obsessed with white women and then we have a heaven which is full of flowers, roses, river of wine, river of milk. People sitting on their couches, reclining, and naked women around them. And those women, you can see through the marrow of their bones. And you do nothing in this heaven except having sex and eating fruits and fish meat. For sure, maybe you can get shisha too. So all those stories make Islam. We cannot take one story and say the rest does not, or it's not Islam. This is Islam. So as an example, where the story, before we asked where Allah is coming from, where is the story of those white women coming from? This is coming from Persia. The Zaradist religion, they have the same belief about the Hur. And actually, it's the same word. And remember, Muhammad, he used to sit for hours and hours with Salman al-Farisi. And the Zaradist, they believe too in the bridge. There's a bridge you cross through. And in the book of Zeradisht is speaking about how the favorite person of, of God, he took him to heaven and he showed him all the things Muhammad he saw in his trip to heaven. Except in the story of Muhammad, we add we have Musas and we have names which have nothing to do with the Zeradisht story. So Muhammad he took the stories from Zeradisht, he put it in his book or his statement, and he adds some spice. And this is very normal, by the way, for the Arab. Uh, we as Arab, like if we tell a story, let us say you tell me, in my way, I have an accident. I saw, I saw an accident and there's two cars hit. 
then I carry the message you told you told me and I give it to the th third person and I say my friend in his way in the highway of etc he saw three cars hit each other so by the time you receive the news it's going to be 40 or 50 cars hitting each other so it's very normal for the Arab to add a spice to stories it's their it's their nature and uh, uh, Muhammad always he added spices to stories a story he carry from someone else then he add things to it and he make it his own because how I'm going to make it my God he says that to me if this is a story which is mentioned before me if you go in the Quran and we type the word ancient stories fabulous fairy tales which is the word asatir you will see each Muhammad each time Muhammad he says something the Arab they say to him this is uh, fairy tales of people before us we know them look how many all those verses saying to him this is nothing but fairy tale stories I will give you a short one do you see it so each time Muhammad he says something the Arab are not well they heard those stories before they say to him this is the ancient the tales of the ancient fabulous stories it's fairy tale stories all right uh, Muhammad uh, Salman al-Farisi he did not leave Persia Salman al-Farisi he was captured as a slave and he was sold in Arabia this is how he ended Mecca all right so he did not go there voluntarily it's not you know he was he went there as a slave so Salman al-Farisi his name is Salman the Persian now the name Salman is not convincing for me because why a person who is a Persian his name is Salman Salman is either either have to be an Arab name or a Persian name so I'm suspecting the name was something different and then after they made him a Muslim supposedly they gave him a name different name and there's no way his name is Salman you know and you notice they kept always when they speak about him they keep calling him the Persian the Persian because they are racist the Persian is he, he was not and he will never be an Arab for them so the name is not I don't I don't think it's an accurate name I don't believe in such a name to be exist I believe that this is a name was given to him the same as others you know like Muhammad is a son of who they say Abdullah but I doubt that Muhammad was a son of a man his name is Abdullah because Abdullah he will go to hell so how he believe in Allah but he will go to hell if you look at the uh, uncles of Muhammad all of them they are sons their name sorry their names is a slave of an idol Abdul Uzza, Abdul Munaf, Abdul Muttalib you know the grandfather of Muhammad all of them they have slaves of idols so all the names including the name of Muhammad it's not real Muhammad as a person as a name I believe Muhammad as a person it, it, it's possible he's exist uh, but Muhammad as a name never exist this is a name was given to Muhammad because they made him holy to the point we don't use uh, the name previously we use the name which now he is his this is his title this is why if you go in the Quran you will see Muhammad sometime he says uh, that his name is Ahmad well, if his name is Muhammad, he should not change it and become Ahmad because what the point? I mean, it's a name. Your name is a, is a, a Muhammad, it's Muhammad. In chapter 61, as an example, verse number six, it says that supposedly Isa will come after Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad he said, a messenger will come after me and his name is Ahmad. Okay. And then the Muslims, they put between two brackets, but when he, i.e. Ahmad, e. Muhammad, I mean, how I, e. e. <laughs> so there is, the, there is a different, different in the pronunciation. It's totally different name. And a name is a name. So what happened? How Ahmad became Muhammad and how Muhammad became Muhammad? Simply they will say to you, well, both of them at the end of the day, almost they have the same meaning. But this is confirmed to us that this is not his real name.
this is why you can switch it to something equal by the meaning you know what I mean uh, and then we notice that Quran come with the new names we never heard of as an example Isa became uh, Jesus became Isa which is the original name is Yeshua or Yeshua so if you try to search for Isa we will really get dizzy to find where is this Isa is coming from and then now me myself actually I could not confirm like for sure where this is Isa coming from it just you, you have to guess it's just guessing it's possible that Muhammad he learned the name from a person who speak broken Greek maybe uh, somebody he learned the name wrong but Isa we never heard of Isa I am an Arab and in the Middle East we never heard of Isa we call him in Arabic Yeshua which is the same word as Yeshua in Arabic that letter Sheen turn into scene so Yeshua is Yeshua Yeshua is Yeshua so uh, all names in the Quran it's coming always wrong very few names are coming correctly however the question is where is Allah is coming from the enter now we did not go to check where Allah is coming from you see if you go in the in the first chapter in the Quran according to revelation and this is what I am translating right now I'm making the Quran according to revelation which means according to what Muslims claim how Muhammad he received revelation so according to revelation or order of revelation Muhammad he received this and what Muhammad he received the first is read in the name of your Lord how Muhammad will know which Lord we are talking about remember at that time the Arab and the Muslims agree that the Arab they have many lords, many gods. The Muslim they will say to you, yes, there was many idols, but those are partners with Allah. So Allah is the super boss of all goddess. The rest are assistant. This is why if we go in the Quran, you will find the Quran says the word mushrikeen. Okay, what mushrikeen mean? You take partners partners with who with Allah which confirm that those who they are Arab they worship they are pagan yes but they worship Allah look what the Quran says in chapter 2 105 neither those who disbelieve among the people of the scriptures People of scriptures are us, Christians and Jews, nor the mushrikeen. Hmm? Between two brackets, this is the Muslim translation, the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. So they believe in Allah, but they take with Allah gods beside him. And here we understand that Muhammad, who supposedly came as a prophet, he is coming from a land which was always for hundreds and hundreds of years worshipping gods beside Allah. Allah is not isolated. Allah is exists as God, but they are sharing gods with the big God. Are we listening? So Allah was exist for the pagan. He is their God, but he is not the only one. <clears throat> then if we go in the Quran, we will find more weird stories. As an example, Allah has daughters. And the Quran make it clear that yes, the Arab believe that God, he have daughters. <clears throat> If we go here, we will find chapter 6, verse 100. 
yet they join the jinns sorry my voice is uh, tired I'm not sure why <coughs> Uh, the the jinn uh, uh, they join the jinn uh, as partners in worship with Allah. Thought He has created them, and in the top of that, they add to Him. And by the way, here the Arabic is coming very weird. They add to Him instead of says here you see a mistake in the Arabic language. Instead of says وَخَلَقُوا لَهُ The Quran says وَخَرَقُوا خَرَقُوا You see in Arabic when you خَرَق uh, uh, is like you you have a fabric and you cut through it. This is خَرَق So I believe here the correct word was خَلَقُوا which means create not خَرَقُوا So the Muslims obviously they got this wrong as, as a, a, the, the, the inscribed I remember that the Quran when it was written, it wasn't written in correct language like this. It was totally different language. So instead of kharaqu, it should be khalaqu, not kharaqu. Penetrate, exactly. So, uh, and here the word penetrate does not make sense because penetrate for him daughters and sons, that's, that's stupid, right? So what penetrate for him sons and daughters? So instead of, and here they translate it as, and the attribute, what attribute? They are trying to fix the meaning. So and they made for him uh, daughters and sons. So the Arab before Islam, they believe Allah have daughters and son. Now in the Quran does not mention the son, but supposedly there is a son. And those are the Arab. Those are the Arab. Those are not the Jews, not the Christians. No, no, no. Those are the Arab. Then you will see in the verse after, he is the originator of the heaven and the earth. How can he have a children when he has no wife? So obviously the Quran confirmed that those who have the idea of worshipping Allah before Muhammad obviously believe that Allah had sex. And he had female daughters and he have children. But the Quran does not tell us Allah had sex with who? <clears throat> Nowhere in the Quran it says, okay, fine, they believe that he have daughters, but who is the wife? <clears throat> in order to understand that more, the God of Islam is the God of the desert. Which means he's the God which people of the desert they favor. You see, if you live in Alaska, what do you what do you miss? Like me, where I live, I miss the sun. Actually, until a week ago, it was very cold. So what we miss, we miss the sun. People of the desert they don't miss the sun. The sun is their enemy. Because the sun is the one who killed their grass, make their water disappear. Sun bring death. It's a desert, as simple as that. The nice one, which the Arab they like, is the moon. Cool, nice, no heat. This is the time when they can sit outside and they suffer from nothing. They can sleep easy. There, even in daytime, if you go inside your tent, you're burning. It's extremely hot. So the Arab, they always favor the god of the moon. Now, Muslim, they will say to you, actually, I heard a guy who is supposedly a Christian minister, supposedly he's smart. He said, well, how, uh, uh, how somebody says that Allah is the moon god? And the Quran said, don't worship the moon. Right? That doesn't make sense. So you are saying that their God is the moon God, and the Quran saying don't worship the moon. The Quran says that Allah is the one who created the moon, and you say don't, you know, that their God is the moon God. So obviously, the one who tried to answer uh, this, uh, he do not know 
that the moon god is not the moon the moon god is not the moon every plant or a planet sorry <clears throat> have a god in control of him so the god of the moon not necessarily the moon if we go in the hadith we will find muhammad saying the following When the sun, when the sun rise, what happened in this website? <clears throat> when the sun is rising, Muhammad he forbid the Muslims from praying. But why? Well, Allah is God, supposedly, and you should be able to pray for him anytime. During the time, during the time where the sun is moving in certain way, Muhammad, he forbid the prayer. So if we go now, and let us hope that's now the website is working. All right. Okay, it was narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet forbid praying after. Uh, sorry, after the Asr. Asr is afternoon, until the sun had set. And after the Subh, until the sun risen. Why? Do we have any Muslim in the chat? You have an answer for this? What is the reason? Any Muslim? You see, you, you can pray, but not in this time. Why? Anyone? Uh, this guy, Sanihu, we spanked him. That's enough. We gave him a spank is enough for the coming 10,000 year. He can make 1,000 video to respond to me. If he is a man, let him call me. He's a potato. He's speaking English. He have no excuse. Right? Why well, don't call me? Let us see. Here we understand that the son and the prayer of Muhammad have, an, have a problem. When the sun is in the move in a certain place, you don't pray. When the sun set, when the sun rise. Muhammad, he gave different in, uh, explanation and different hadith. And by the way, all of, all of those are sahih. So Muslims cannot say this is not accepted. All right? They cannot say this is uh, weak, this is not true. Right? In different hadith, Muhammad, he makes it more clear for us. He have a problem with this God. This God, or the God of Muhammad, he have a problem with the God who is in control of the sun. The sun, it rise from between the two horn of shaitan do you see it so muhammad saying pray in such in such a time and such a time but don't ever pray in this time and this time why 
because the sun rises from the between the two horn of shaitan so the god of the sun for muhammad is the shaitan now if a muslim he will say it means something else okay well give me the answer do you really believe that the sun coming from between the horn of shaitan Any Muslim believe in that? And now, is that uh, is that hadith is a weak hadith? The Muslim, what they, the, the Muslim, they will always uh, come to us with a story. He says, all our stories is weak. All the stories we have is weak. And look, those one have no translation too. Any any story we show them, show Muhammad is funny, and he don't have no idea what he's talking about. They say it's weak, but as you see, this is Al Bukhari, the most authentic book for the Muslims. So the moon never come from between the two horns of the devil. And the sun not only rise from bet between the two horns of the devil, but it's set between the two horns of the devil. It rise from between the two horns of the devil and it's set between the two horns of the devil. So who is the devil for Muhammad? The sun god. There's a competition between the sun god and the moon god. And stop until the sun has set for it's set between the horn of the shaitan and it raises between the horn of shaitan. Do you see it? And that all is coming from mythology. Everyone he have a mythology he is copying from somewhere. So the mythology is saying, or all the ancient stories, that the moon, because he's cool, because he's nice because he don't kill us we are people of the desert he don't bring death so the Sun for the people of the desert present the evil it bring nothing but destruction harm thirst death their cattle die their grass go their water disappear that is the Sun so the Sun for sure the one who sent the Sun or in control of the sun he is the devil and the devil here is the god of the he's not necessarily the word uh, uh, you know like the, the devil as we know he is whoever in control of the sun so always the devil he sent the sun from between his two horn because obviously he is in control she is the crown head or the head the crown of the devil what about the moon if there is any instruction, Muhammad, he asked the Muslims, if you can, you want, you can pray all the night if you want. This is why you see that Allah, he come down in the third part of the night, not during the day. Do you remember? That is a night time. Third part of the night is still it's night. So the God of the moon, he is listening to you as long as it is night. When the sun comes, Allah is gone. So it's forbidding for us to pray that during the sunrise, the sunset, because this is the God of the Sun there. He is Allah is not there. Why you want to pray? Now somebody will say, okay, but all the prayer of Muhammad is during the daytime. It doesn't matter. As you see, Allah will come to collect the prayer only at night. Allah is not coming down at the noon time. Neither afternoon. Neither even in the morning. Neither even when the sun set. He come only at night in the dark. Because this is the time where it is cool. You see, 
the early early before the morning it's not morning yet let's say it's like 3 a.m. in the morning it is dark but it's nice the heat of the Sun this is the most cool time in the day for the people of the desert Allah now is coming down any Muslim you don't agree <clears throat> And here, by the way, this is again an, another legion because Allah come down to hear us. Can't he hear us from everywhere he is? And the most time they say, how you accept God to go inside his creation? But as you see, Allah here is going inside his creation. If you go from the seven heaven to the lowest heaven between them, this is his creation. Correct? So if Allah... And by the way here this is shown us that Muhammad is a false prophet I don't know how many of you notice we explained that before let us let us open uh, Google Earth so we can make it more clear <coughs> Google Earth All right. It's clenching, taking time. All right. So this is Google Earth. And let us say this is here Mecca. In this spot. So we will make Mecca facing the sky. Okay? Mecca now is facing the sky and we will make a dot on Mecca so people will notice with us where is Mecca now this is Mecca here let us choose a red color this is Mecca so Muhammad said that Allah in the third part of the night every night he come down from this point which is supposed to be the seven heaven and then he come down to the lowest heaven so if we say the lowest heaven is here if we say this is the lowest heaven heaven number one then there's heaven number two three four five six and then this is seven So Allah supposedly is located here and then Allah is going to go down from the heaven seven and he will stop in the lower heaven which is heaven number one so Allah will end specifically in this location here going down this is his limit but in order for Allah to go down he have to go through heaven number seven number number heaven number six five four three two and then he stop at heaven number one that's mean Allah is going and is swimming inside his creation and that contradict all the stories Muslim they say that Allah cannot be inside his creation same time going back to our point Allah come only at the, at the night to receive your prayer Allah is the Almighty God supposedly and he is all-knowing but as you see Allah is not knowing about your prayer unless you go from point A to point B point A is in the top point B is down in the bottom and then when Muhammad he said that Allah come down every third part of the night obviously Muhammad he been taught as he claimed by God which is Allah supposedly that the earth is a flat because the only way to accept such a false teaching if the whole earth have one time so if it is here in Mecca now 11 o'clock at night 
that's mean it should be 11 o'clock p.m. all over the earth so if Allah will come at 3 p.m. so it's a 3, 3 a.m. in the morning before the sunrise let us say that's mean in order for this to happen every day he come that's mean 3 a.m. have to be the time zone for all the whole earth one time and this is again explained that Muhammad is an idiot He's just copying stories from before him. Copy and here he, here he, you know, pause the story again and he adds some spices. So, the point here that Allah is a person who come to hear our voices only at night, for He is the cool night God, the moon God, not the sun God. If we go in the Quran, we will find something more proving to us that Allah is the moon God. How we can prove it? All of you remember that in the Quran there is something is called a Laylatul Qadr. What Laylatul Qadr mean? The night of power, according to Muslim trans translation. So Laylatul Qadr <clears throat> Chapter 97 Chapter uh, 1, 2, 3 Keep speaking about this night Okay, what happened in this night? In this night, Muhammad received the Quran Question Why the Quran come at night is not coming at daytime? The Muslim they say that Allah He sent the Quran all of it together. Some of them they say that, just to be more accurate. That all the Quran was sent together down, but it was not delivered to Muhammad all in the same time. Which means it sent down to the tablet or you know somewhere, a storage house, and then the angel Jibreel he was picking up what is supposed to pick up. For delivery to Muhammad but all the Quran came down in the night of power why in the night of power why does God not only praising the night he is saying that night is equal to 83 years of a prayer Do you see it? The night time is the favorite time for Allah to come down. It's the favorite time to send His holy book. It is even equal, one night equal to 83 years as deeds, which means if you pray in that night alone, is like praying for 83 years, which is extremely crazy. Crazy and stupid. So when Muhammad, he says, such a thing, and he claim that at the night, it's where the angel descend and the spirit of Allah descend. So even the spirit of Allah, they do their business at night time. Peace, peace, all the night, until the sunrise. Do you see it? That Allah give them peace all this night until the appearance of the dawn. Okay, why the peace of Allah will disappear with the appearance of the dawn? Uh, are we following, guys? Do you notice what I'm saying? The peace stay for how long? The peace stay until the sun rise again. The sun rise, the peace of Allah go. Because Allah authority is not a day authority. There's two authority. One control the day and one control the night. 
So the peace of Allah is only at night. And this is what we said to you from the beginning, that in Islam, the reason the Arab, they, they, they praise uh, uh, the moon God because this is the nice God who bring peace. It's cool, it's nice, people start saying poetry, the Arab, they have nothing to do except poetry because, I mean, what they will do, what they, what they have in life, you know, goat, a tent, and spend the night, uh, you know, sitting in the floor and looking at the star, stars, and they speak, talking. This is what they have, no, nothing. So, the moon god was a very, the most popular god in all hot area. The sun god was the popular god in the cold area. What is the source? This is the Quran. You see, I brought no source from outside until now, correct? Because if I bring other source from history books, the Muslim, they say we don't believe in them anyway. So I don't waste my time. All my explanation is based in what is written in front of us from Islamic translation, their Quran and their Hadith. No, in Egypt, in Egypt, no, in Egypt, my friend, it's not about because the sun uh, God is not, uh, no. The, in Egypt, they have a different understanding for the sun. In Egypt, they have that the power, like the sun is the power. So while the Arab were seeking the peacetime of the cool night, because our, uh, Egypt is not totally desert. You see, the civilization of, of Egypt was not living in the desert. It was living side the Nile River, which is a very huge river. So they are not really short of water. Actually, it's the opposite. The flood used to come in the Nile River and kill thousands of people every year. So Egypt is a different story because this is not really a total desert land. Yes, the, the, the land in majority, it is, it's a desert, but who live there anyway? People live beside the river of the Nile River. All right? So those are farmers. <clears throat> they are farming people. They do farming. This is how they live in Egypt. The desert people, they are not farming people. The grass grow by itself. There's no source of water like rivers or even lakes. So they have from time to time spring of water here it come disappear demand in the rain. And they move from place to place. This is why they are called Bedouin. The Bedouin is coming from the word Bedou, which is coming from the Aramaic. So people who live in the desert, they have different, uh, let us say, mentality and different request you see if you are a poor person and then suddenly uh, let us say uh, let's make a fiction story suddenly something happened to you and somebody asked you make a wish because you are poor I mean okay your maximum wish okay uh, buy me a TV okay but if you ask the same question for somebody like Bill Gate make a wish what the wish will be so the wish of every person or a group of people depend in their needs do we understand depend on their needs the farmers they needed the Sun it is the one who made their goods grow they have water Egypt is not short of water until now they are not short of water actually even though like they are building dams, but still the Nile River is, is running. And we are talking thousands of years after. So we need to understand the mentality and the needs in order to go beyond. <coughs> now, so the most powerful night for, uh, time for Allah is the night. It is where He come, when He come, and when He delivered the Quran. Muhammad forbid praying during the sunrise, the sunset. What else? Anyone remember something else? <clears throat> I apologize. My voice is not doing good. I'm not sure why. <clears throat> I think I drank too much coffee. Anyone remember what, what else we can come with? What else? 
Muslims they say Islam is a religion of Tawheed correct Tawheed and what Tawheed we explained to you before Tawheed does not mean oneness Tawheed means unification he unify God it's not one God as the Muslim they claim to say unto you however I will go with the Muslims claim when they say it is oneness of God but look at this oneness of God this oneness of God who Islam came with supposedly the Arab don't believe in that they believe that Allah he have partners and Muhammad he reject that idea Allah has no partners if we go to the story of Abraham we will find Abraham who worshiping the moon worshiping the Sun worshiping the stars When Abraham he prayed to the sun, what he said? He said, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. When he saw the sun, he said, This is my Lord, not greater. This is false translation. Akbar does not mean greater. This is my Lord, this is Akbar. Akbar was the sun God. He's Akbar. An idol who is big, a huge, the biggest, they call him Akbar. If I want to say I have two houses and this house is bigger than this house, what the word I use in Arabic? Akbar. It's not a greater, because a greater can be many things. can be greater in the furniture, can be greater in many things, but not necessarily bigger. Akbar necessarily is about size, especially we are talking about items. So here we notice that when Abraham he saw the sun, he only say Akbar, but he did not say that to the moon. When he saw the moon, he said, this is my God. And then the sun said, he said, I don't like the one who said, okay. But in this case, Abraham was worshiping the moon himself, not the God of the moon. In the case of the sun, he called the sun Akbar. And then when he saw planets in the sky, one of them, we do not know which one, he said, this is my God, and this is Akbar. But each time the star or the plant disappear because the sun come, Abraham, he says, I don't like the one who disappear, for surely I will not believe in this. And then Allah supposedly suddenly appear. In the story of Adam of Abraham but it doesn't say that how he appeared to him because suddenly Abraham he says I believe in Allah okay how a person who believe okay how, how, how Abraham in Islam became knowing about Allah who introduced Allah to Abraham any Muslim can tell us Who introduced Allah to Abraham okay Abraham he was worshiping the moon the stars the Sun and then how he was able to know about Allah suddenly and then he says here I turn my face uh, to the sky and I am Hanif Muhammad the idiot by using the word Hanif that's mean he is a pagan Hanif does not mean believe in the oneness of God Hanif is an Aramaic word mean pagan so how he now believe in Allah and he became pagan but because Muhammad do not know what Hanif mean he says I am Hanif and now the Muslims until now this call themselves ad al Hanif the religion of Hanif but Hanif is a pagan. To be a Hanif, it's to be a pagan, lost one. So how 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 Abraham he called himself Hanif? But because they are ignorant with the language, they copy it and they use it. And then after Abraham, he called 
the son Akbar and then he decides suddenly he decides to worship Allah the Muslims they come with a story that Abraham he went all the way to Mecca first he sent his wife and her son Hajar and Ishmael and here you will notice how stupid the story the Muslim book says that the first house Allah he built is in Mecca actually it's not in Mecca it is in city it's called Bekka okay how they say that the one when when Ishmael he went there there was no Kaaba but the Quran says that the first one Allah he built it was the house in Bekka The Muslim they say Bekka is the same as Mecca, but absolutely this is not true. Because neither Mecca, neither Bekka are the name of the city of Mecca. You see, there is a temple we showed you before, it's called the Temple of Al Maqqa. The Yemeni people, the letter Ka, they come with it Qa. So Maqqa, not Mecca. Baqa. So they switch letters. You remember the Muslim they say to you the Quran came in seven dialect? Here we go. So Mecca is a temple which is the temple of the moon god, not Mecca, the one we know now. It is the Mecca in Yemen. If we go and we do a little search, Let us see. Uh, you can search even in even in Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not a trustworthy information, but it's okay. You can search it just to show you how you can search it. God of Al Makkah. You see Al Makkah. Here we notice the connection between the moon god, the Makkah, and the Sabian. The Sabian, they claim they are the one who built this temple. The Sabian, they claim that even the Pharaoh, he was a Sabian too. This is why the Sabian they call the God of the Jews Adonai. He is the devil. Why? Because he killed the Pharaoh soldiers. So they hate him. So it is Al it is Al Makkah. We told you before that Al Al mean what? God. Makkah is the God of the location or the place. So Rabbul Makkah, the Lord of the Makkah, Al Makkah, Al Makkah, Al Bakkah. Then we find in the side of the Kaaba, there is a corner, it's called Yemeni corner. Yemeni corner okay what this corner is about if you look at this corner you will see there's a collection of stones and Muhammad he claimed that those stones and the black stone both of them if you touch them your sin is erased Why those stones are unique? Because those stones are taken from the real temple, not the counterfeit, which is Al Makkah, which is in Yemen, the one we showed you the name. So the Arab, what they used to do, okay, people they believe in the God of the the, the God of Al Makkah, but they have to travel a thousand miles to go there. 
let us bring some stones build the Kaaba put the stone there instead of going there come here we have the stones here for you you know what I mean and then we find Muhammad proving to us again that he is nothing but a continued paganism religion he says that the one who touched those stones and the black stone they, if you touch them they erase your sin and then we need to ask ourselves and if there's a Muslim can answer us how touching those stones will erase our sin this is again proving that Islam is nothing but a collection of cults it's a continue of paganism and then we find that Muhammad he kissed the black stone and he believed it is a holy stone But not all the Muslims believe in Muhammad behavior. But Muhammad, because he is a crazy person, willing to compromise with anyone just to make him believe. He kissed the black stone. The Arab like it. What I can do? The Arab like the Kaaba. We will keep the Kaaba. Suddenly, Muhammad he switched from praying to Jerusalem, praying to the Kaaba. What happened? Why all this time Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem? Because he was trying to convince the Jews that he is a prophet the same as Moses the Jews did not believe him the Christian don't believe him okay now we switch who need you anyway I give up now we go back to our roots we go back to the Kaaba all right and we find that even praying to the Kaaba was an idea from Umar al Khattab. Umar, he said, My Lord, he agreed with me in three things. Okay, what Allah he agree with you? And between two brackets, the Muslim they say, My judgment. What judgment? Umar said, Let us make the Kaaba. Uh, 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 a location of uh, direction to pray Allah he take the sentence as Omar he said and he make it a verse Omar he said let us make hijab women wear hijab Allah he take it he make hijab same as actually there's many many cases not only three some they say there's 10 cases some they say even more 15 we do not know so my Lord agreed with me who is who is Omar that Allah he agree with him here you see Muhammad the false prophet he is copying ideas he like he adopted and then he claim Allah is the one he made it but look even the Muslim books they could not hide the truth look what Omar here is saying so I said I said to Allah a prophet it may be he the prophet divorce you all that uh, and that is uh, uh, all that is this is his Lord we gave him instead of you why is better than you so the verse the verse came the same as as I had said do you see it guys am I making things up the same as I had said word by word letter by Lord letter Muhammad all his religion is collection of ideas of people around him Hijab is coming from Omar. Omar, he saw the wife of Muhammad doing poo, poo He started making fun of her, saying to her, Arif naki ya Sauda, making fun of her ass. She was big and old. And then he knew she was going to tell her husband about what he did. So he said, Why you don't ask your women, man, to cover themselves? Huh? And Muhammad don't dare, he's a coward, to say to him, Shame on you to do that to my wife. And then Muhammad, he found himself, he had no choice but to adopt as Umar ibn Khattab, he said, word by word. And here we need to ask ourselves, did Allah inspire Umar? Actually, Muhammad, he says, if there is a prophet shall come after me, it should be Umar. You believe it? Because obviously, Umar, he noticed that Muhammad is a, is a scam. I am the one who said that you take it you put it in the Quran he noticed it right away that's why he says my Lord agree with me do you see it 
He's not stupid. He is the one who said those things. And he noticed he says something, Muhammad, he make a Quran. He go to Muhammad, he says something in the morning. Muhammad, he says, Allah, he give me this. Like, I am the one who said that to you. Just yesterday. So, uh, Omar, he is not stupid. He noticed. And Muhammad, in, or, in order to bribe Omar, he starts saying good things about Omar. If there is a prophet, it will be after me. It, it should be Omar. Because he agreed, you know, he must be a prophet too. How he can shut him up? So all Muhammad's stories is coming from collection. This is why it's very hard to track Islam as a religion because Islam is not a religion by itself. Islam is a collection of stories, gods, deity, pagans, paganism, black stone, vaginal black stone. We showed you many times. If you remember my debate with the Sheikh last time, we played yesterday. When I showed him that it says, here we go, this is your tafsir, this is your book. The women they used to touch their vagina when they have their period and they place it inside the black stone so they can get babies. Did he dare to say this is a lie? So why Muhammad adopt the black stone if this is what the black stone was? And Allah, he need to send the stone so the Muslim will know where to build the stone, to build the Kaaba. But as I know, Muslim, they claim that the one who built the Kaaba first time, it was the angels. And let us say Allah he sent the stone from heaven. So what? There's millions of stones coming from the space. But as we know, the Arab always worship stones. And if they could not find a good stone, even they make one. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. But if we could not get a stone, then we could collect some earth, which means dirt, and bring a sheep, and we milk it on them, on the dirt, and perform tawaf. You see the tawaf? Tawaf, tawaf is going around this thing. This is, this is pagan, pure pagan practice. Was exist before Muhammad and nothing new. When they see any, you know, this is a desert, so it's easy to find like rocks, strange rocks, because it's a sand, pure sand. There's nothing but sand. So when they see a strange looking rock, which obviously is a meteor, they take it and they worship it. And anytime they find something better, They throw the first one and they come with the other one. They replace it. Do we have any Muslim here who have uh, an objection for what we are saying? As you see, we never said anything without proving it. Now, we go to something more important. How Allah, he got the three daughters. What made the Arab believe that Allah have three daughters? Any Muslim? What made the Arab believe in that? What kind of belief that? Why? Why did he have three daughters? Why don't he don't have one? What about two? Why he have a lad and a uzza? Who is a lad? <clears throat> You know, sometimes I try not to go in, in details because it's too much, and maybe some of us cannot handle too much information. A lat is, as all words are not, those are not Arabic words, have nothing to do with the Arab. Arab are following religions, they are not making religion. They add things, you know, they have them some fabrication, yes, but they are followers. A lat. It's coming from the Babylon land. And the origin of it, it is a latu. A latu. And a latu mean the goddess. Female god. So this is not the name really. 
This is not the name. El, <coughs> El by itself is a word meaning God. El Latu. God Latu. But Latu here present another God. There was a God uh, who controls supposedly the lower uh, world. There's lower world, there's higher world. So this God who controlled the lower world. And she is a female who have wings. And she wear uh, uh, a crown, which is uh, having like two horn. Let me see if I can find a picture. <clears throat> We need an authentic picture, not uh, uh, not something is made, you know, painting or anything. I'm trying to find. Hmm. Anyway, the only picture I have now is this, but there is it should be there is other one. <clears throat> this is about this is like contain the three together, supposedly. But then if we go and investigate those Latu or this uh, Lat and Al-Uzza and Manat, we will find that they are not coming even from uh, uh, like maybe the name is coming from there, but they have other names. All the European and the Mediterranean, they used to worship almost like same gods, but the name changed, depend in the location, depend in the language. So there was a god, it's called Arshaki Kal. And that this is the woman which is called Alatu. So Arshaki Kal, which the, the people of the Babylon or the people of Iraq, they used to call her short name Alatu was the God who is in control of bad things can happen to us. And she used to have a minister. And this minister, uh, uh, he was connection between her and the higher gods. Because the reason she was God sent down to the ground, because simply she was kind of punished. She did something bad. But she is God is still. Uh, and then when the when the, uh, the minister he convinced the god which supposedly i believe is allah in this case the higher god he replaced her with someone he's called or i don't know what the name and uh, uh, let me see what is the name in english Uh, do you remember before we said to you there was there was a female who tried to have sex with the angels Harut and Marut according to Islamic mythology? Her name is Az Zahra. Az Zahra. Az Zahra supposedly is a Venus, and then there is other name for her. Depend in the look in the in the in the country. Like uh, uh, Aphrodite, uh, Venus, uh, 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 Asharut, uh, Ishtar. So, the, but the same person have many names. It's not like different person. So this is supposedly it is going to be the replacement. So the replacement will be sent down, and then the other god, Alatu, will go up. It was Venus. She will be punished. And she will be sent down to live down. If you read the Muslim story, if you remember, after uh, Venus 
or uh, Zuhra, the Arabic name. She had sex with the two angels, Harut and Marut, which we find in the Quran. And those are angels where Allah He sent them down to send to teach magic. After they have sex with her, they give her the password to go to Allah to heaven, which means she will become more powerful. But after they have sex with her and they give her the password, she starts going up to the heaven so she can conquer and take the place of Allah. Allah He heard about what she did and she is coming. So Allah He cursed her and He made her the star Venus or the planet Venus. And by the way, this is what the Muslims believe, not me. And here you will see how Islam is mixed with Islam is not mixed only, it is a fiction. All of it is a fiction. If you read this story, you will see how crazy it is. Allah He sent two angels to teach magic. I mean, do you need to be a genius to notice that this is cannot be God? Allah He sent two angels to open a school, it's called Hori Buddha School. You join it and you learn how to make magic. And what's the point of this magic? To teach how the man, how, how, how we can make a man hit his wife and divorce. Sorcery. Do you see it? Those angels, they are willing to teach you. They teach you magic. But they teach you, they say, hello, hello, disclaimer. Allah send us to teach magic. We open school. But you have to know that this is temptation from Allah trial. And we teach you how this magic with our specialty is how to make the wife and the husband fight and This is how always people understood how two people two couple they used to be in love With Venus Venus The love God the, the sex God the beauty God so how they used to be in love together and then a year or two years after they want to go for divorce and they hate each other What happened? It must be the magic Which is coming in the baby lawn tower. Do you see it? Do you see it, people So if you ever have a problem with your wife or your husband my friend it is Allah. Allah, He taught somebody to do magic to both of you. Now, for sure, magic is a stupid. We don't believe in it. Somebody might say, well, the Bible is speak about the magic of uh, Moses. No, this is how they saw the miracle of pieces as magic. But Moses did the real miracle, not a magic. The Bible teaches there is sorcery. Sorcery is a practice, but we don't believe in it. Nobody can control you. Here we go, control me by your magic. Control Trump. Control Putin. You can you can destroy the whole world. And the paganism believe go in the roots of Islam all the way deep, not only in the branches, to the point even Muhammad himself he claimed that he was a victim of the black magic, and he himself he was bewitched. So Muhammad in order to explain why he do stupid things which he cannot explain he cannot give excuse to it so what is the excuse I was bewitched which means somebody is out of you know out there controlling me and don't blame me you see if I convince you that I'm bewitched that's then you cannot be upset from me you, you know what I mean a person who under the idea of bewitched, what is that? What bewitched mean? It means this guy he ha he lost control of what he do. Which means you are saying uh, he is not really a, he is a victim himself. He is not a criminal. So he do things he have not nothing to do with it. He was bewitched, and always the pagan they believe. In the bewitching to explain something they cannot explain if someone especially if someone you sometimes he act normally and sometimes he acts stupid or crazy how they can explain that so their knowledge is, is limited 
like somebody he have two two uh, different personality Shephronidza, right they call it sophronic so how we can explain that he is he said something now and then later he denied he said it or he did it we say he was bewitched and muhammad he used the mythology of the arab for his purpose always and now he is using the mythology of the arab who believe in the bewitching to protect himself from a bad behavior he do so don't blame me and then he come with a story that somebody took some hair of him and allah he sent two angels and they cut uh, like they put him in the table as you see the story here three angels because Muhammad, Muhammad uh, bewitching became so horrible to the point he can imagine himself having sex, but in fact he was not having sex with the wife. It was maybe the goat or maybe the pillow. So Allah, he sent the three angels and they, so they will discover what the problem with this guy. So you will see here Muhammad in the story here, he fabricated a new story saying, the prophet continued for such and such a period imagining that he had slept six or intercourse with his wife but in fact he did not okay hold on how we can trust muhammad that he was seeing angels maybe he was imagining too even this this guy even his sex is not real even his sex is fiction as long as you admitting that his sex was not real he imagined okay what is the guarantee how many times this during this time when he was suffering from these issues we do not know for how long he said things that Allah gave him. Let us say Muhammad was suffering from such a problem for a short time. But doesn't matter, he's a prophet. People come and ask him questions about what to do, what not to do. So Allah he sent down three angels, and one of them is Jibreel. One of the angels says to Jibreel, What's wrong with this man? So Muhammad he admit something wrong with him Correct what the story guys saying not me the story saying that one of the angel asked the other angel What's wrong with this man? So they are coming for a rescue because there is something wrong Right Can a Muslim says I'm I'm making things up as you say this is the reference in front of you there is obviously something wrong the other one replied he says oh he's under the effect of magic and then they you know said etc somebody took some hair from him he stuck it into blah 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 and he hide it somewhere blah 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 I mean it's a stupid story the story alone here is enough to prove to us that Muhammad is nothing but a liar he can choose between his mentally ill as you see he's imagining things how we know that even this story here is nothing but imagining too but let's say I'm a Muslim God forbid and now I see this story and you are saying to me the stories the story itself saying that the Prophet he imagined he did something or he saw something but in fact he did not how I can trust that this story itself is nothing but imagination you guys do you understand what I'm saying uh, are we following the story itself saying to us that this guy imagine okay what if this is all his imagination even the story where it says uh, Allah he sent him three angels to save him how stupid this religion is how I can't trust this man after this this guy even his six have no witness for it Muhammad he went to seven heaven there's nobody saw him he came from the seven heaven nobody saw him he went to Jerusalem nobody saw him by the way yesterday I was in Japan and in my way I stopped in China which is next to Brazil and in Brazil uh, it was very cold because uh, it's in the North Pole and then in my way I stop uh, in, in Philippines which is close to the you know uh, uh, Argentina and then you know in my way I said to myself let us guy uh, buy some shopping in Dubai you know because Dubai is right in, in the middle of city of Mexico and, and then I came back and you asked me okay do you have witnesses I say uh, no no witnesses I mean who need who need witnesses with a guy like Muhammad who dare even to say do you have witnesses no witnesses
right? And then we can go and see, like, as an example, Muhammad, not only he took from the Persian stories, not only from the Sabian story, even, even the Arab, they used to call him a Sabian. The, the abolition of Muslim is Sabian. Putting their hand over their face and with the water, Sabian. If I show you, you know, let, let me let me see if I can find you a video made by the Sabian themselves. They are still exist. The Sabian are not, not that. If you remember the... Uh, 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 when ISIS came, they start killing them and raping them, you know. Uh, there's a video that shows you exactly how the Sabian, made by the Sabian, how they do evolution. Let us see. <coughs> I cannot play the video, so nobody, you know, they don't claim uh, copyright. I don't think they care for copyright, those people, Sabian, but the Muslim will play games. Uh, here we go. Let us see where we can find you, the Sabian doing evolution. I wish I can play, play the video for you, by the way. I have it in front of me, but I'm trying to find where exactly. There's many videos of them. I'm trying to find which one showing how they do the evolution. Not this one. Anyway, uh, I made a video about it actually before, about how they do evolution. Let us see. See, the video is, is long and it's hard to find. <clears throat> All right, let's see this one. Okay, this is the I, I found the video. All right, this is the video. Those are Sabian from Iraq. I will post the link for you, and you tell me how they do evolution. I'm not going to play the video. You can watch it later. They do evolution exactly the same as Muslims. Actually, I did not watch it, but I'm assuming they are. He is doing evolution. Let me be sure. Let us see. Yeah, he is doing evolution. He clean his ears. He put the uh, water over. You know, it's it's exactly the same in his mouth, in his nose, in his etc. Exactly his feet, his hands. You know, it's exactly. And he is explaining in this uh, how uh, how he, how he do things. This is the evolution. But the other one, like this guy, he is just wasting time. Just you know, he's not. Uh, I, I want to find the video where he just do it in full without talking too much about how he do it maybe I can find the other one the other one is just doing it and you see and you can watch any Muslim videos doing evolution and you will see all right everything in this cult is coming from somewhere Ramadan is coming from there Ramadan and then you know, okay, so how the moon god have to do with Moses? I mean, how Islam is coming originally from the moon god, pagan god, and then Moses, and then Isa, Jesus, and then Abraham, how they all mix together. As I said, Islam is not an independent religion by itself. It is a collection of many, many religions, cults and religions. When Muhammad was trying to convince the Jews that he is to accept him, he have to adopt what they accept. 
so he adopted Abraham he lived between them he adopted Moses you will notice what Muhammad when he was with the Jews he did not speak about Isa he's not a Isa guy he was Abraham guy Musa guy Muhammad don't want to follow anyone except supposedly Moses and Abraham Isa is rejected by the Jews or let's say Jesus so Muhammad when he was with the Jews like today I saw in the news uh, the Muslim minister in England the minister for uh, internal minister he went to the Jerusalem and he is wearing a Jewish hat and praying in the Jewish temple wall what his name Let me see if I can find him in the news. Here we go. Do you see him? This is our Muslim friend. He's wearing a Jewish hat now. And he visited the temple hall, the temple mount. And he prayed in front of it. That is Muhammad. This guy now he wants to go in election to have to have a higher uh, uh, position. So he want to convince everybody that he is not okay. I'm a Muslim, I'm originally from Muslims family, but I don't care. Just make me take the job. All right. But he should not do that because supposedly this is a, this is against Islam. This is those are the Jews who took the land from the Allah Akbar. Uh, no, he don't care. He wanna he wanna get the job. So he go there. He is a Jew now. He is wearing a Jewish hat. He believe in what they believe. They believe that this is their temple, and that's it. Exactly what Obama did. So those kind of people always they are willing to compromise because they are fake. They are not real. They don't have. A decency or let us say uh, uh, a value they are stuck with they are willing to compromise easy and just give us a job whatever the job is like sometimes people they get upset from me for I say things and they say if you say that again I will not donate for you don't ever donate for me I'm not for sale take take your money and go we don't compromise a person who compromise his belief he have no belief Either you believe in it or you don't believe in it. And this is exactly what happened with Muhammad. Muhammad with the Christian, he believed in Jesus. With the Jews, he don't believe in Jesus. He never mentioned Jesus to the Jews. He always mentioned Isaac and Jacob and Abraham. So this is what the Jews are about. He's with a Sabian. He's a Sabian. He's with the pagan. He's a pagan. He prayed for the three daughters of Allah, Allah and Al Uzza and Manat. The Arab they like a Safa and Al Marwa, which is supposedly a place where. Two statues of a male and female were placed placed there, women and the men who have sex together, and they became rocks. And this is another legion. So Allah He punished them and He made them two rocks. So when you ask me who is Allah, where Allah came from, I can take you one thousand year trip. Still, you are not done because you have to read tons of books. Tons and thousands of names because Allah is not really exist Allah is a legions of many nations and Allah is not a name it is al lah al is a word meaning God lah is the God we are talking about however by the way all those names they have a transformation as an example this is not only for the, the, the Muslims by the way even for the Christians in the Bible, there's no name for God. Like many of you says, God says 
uh, Yahweh. Yahweh is not a name. Uh, some some of them will say to you, "Oh, Yahweh was even Yah was a moon god." No, Yah is a word present the God, and the Aramaic is the origin of all languages in the Middle East. All of them they are born from there. The God of the Christians, the God of the Jews, never mention a name or what he said, "I am." So you need to look at the sentences. It says, "I am." It doesn't say this is my. It doesn't say uh, my name is etc. It says, "I am who I am." Which means the one exists by himself, so there's no God. Jehovah is not a name. Elohim is not a name. Yahweh is not a name. And the reason there is no name because our Lord, Almighty God, there is no name can contain Him, no name can describe Him. You see, even Jesus is Emmanuel. It's not a name. It's God with us, but we did not give it a name. You know this. So the Jews always they avoid in any way in any mean to get a close to say God has a name because he is almighty How you can give him a name? What name can describe him <laughs> so we don't have names in Islam Allah Become a name for them even though it was not necessarily a name in the beginning or let us say for other nations There's a transformation method as an example, Israel was Israel. So Eel, which is present God, not a name of God, any God. Ezra, Yiel, but it was Ezra, Yal, Mika'il, Mika'al, Ishma'il, Ishma'al. So Eel became Al, or say, sorry, Al became Eel. So the ancient Hebrew is Al, and the new Hebrew is a ill ill but the both words are the same all right <clears throat> now uh, we can keep going with this topic it's endless but i will mention maybe this story just for a snack we mentioned to you that there is uh <clears throat> The Quran chapter 27 verse number 82 speak about a beast What is the description of this beast this beast by the way in one of the stories Muhammad he said she is a woman Look Message of Allah said once delay etc prayer he delayed the prayer why okay The talk he spoke to us somebody a guy his name is Tamim Dari. Tamim Dari, he told Muhammad a story. Muhammad, he loved a story. Tamim Dari, he says, he was in the sea, uh, or let us say, a man he was in the sea, and he went to an island, and all of a sudden, he found a woman who was training her hair. He asked her, who are you? She said, I am Jassasa. Go to that castle. So I came to it and found a man who is it trailing his hair chained in iron colors and lapping between heaven and earth i ask who are you he replied i am the dajjal and by the way the muslim when they put the antichrist this is not what it says muslim do not believe in antichrist that the dajjal is the false messiah so look how Muhammad is mixing stories and making stories up. The guy, he told him a story, and Muhammad, he accepted. He took it, and he started teaching it. And then, I am the Dajjal. Has the prophet of the illiterate people come forth now? The Dajjal is, he don't have internet, so he don't know what's happening now. I replied, yes. He said, have they obeyed him or disobeyed him? I said, no. They have obeyed him. He said, this is better for them. Hold on. How the guy is the judge, which means he's a liar, and he liked the idea that people are obeying Muhammad. Even that the judge, the liar, the judge, by the way, means a scam, the scammer, the liar. Even that the judge sponsor Muhammad. When a liar, he sponsors you. That's mean you're a liar too. Now, who in the world would believe in such a story? 
And Muhammad, he liked the story to the point he delayed the, 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 the prayer. The guy, he just told him a story. He came to them. He said, this is a true story. And then Muhammad, he inserted this story in the Quran. And this story repeated many times. Look how long this story here. If I read it for you, it would take us forever. All right. <clears throat> and actually, here in the story, it's like a, a, there is a female shaitan too. Shaitana. Hmm. Uh, here, Muhammad, he add more spice to the story. Let us see. We are people from Arabia. We embark upon a boat, but the sea waves had been driving us for a month, and they had brought us uh, brought as near as this island. We got into the sea, in the side uh, boat, and entered this island. And here, uh, here a beast meet us with the prophecy thick hair, because of the thickness of his hair, his face could not be distinguished. From his back, he looked like me. This guy, I mean, I told you when I go to the swimming pool, they kick me out, they think I'm wearing my clothes. We said, We uh, we be or uh, to thee, who are you? I said, I am a Jassasa. We said, What is a Jassasa? And then it said, You go to this very person in the monastery for he is eagerly waiting for you to know about you uh -huh. so we came to you in a hot hasty fearing and that might be the devil <laughs> he that a chained person said Tell me about the dead palm tree of the basin. We said, about what aspect of their do you seek information? He said, you whether these trees bear fruit or not. We said, yes. Thereupon he said, I think these would not bear fruits. He said, Inform me about the lake of Tabaraya. The lake of Tabaraya. Okay, here we go. We are in, we are in, we are in Israel now. We said, which aspect do you want to know? He said, is there water in it? I mean, it's the lake of Tabaraya, and there's no water in it. In the lake of Tabaraya, there's no water in the lake. Let it go. Then said, there are abundance of the water in it. Thereupon he said, I think it would soon come become dry. He again said, inform me about the spring of Zakar. They said, which aspect you want to know? He, the chain person, said, is there water in it? I mean, this guy. He is going to take us to the lake. We will end in Lake Tahoe. Just wait. He will keep asking about Lake, Lake Tahoe, Lake. I mean, come on. This is this is Islam. This is Islam. So we said, yes, there is abundance of water in it. And the inhabitants of Medina irrigate land with the help of it. He said. Inform me about the unliterated prophet. Here we go. This is the whole story to arrive to arrive, to arrive there. All the, the fabrication is just to get there. Now, finally, we are getting about Muhammad. What has he done? We said he has come out of from Mecca and he has settled in Yathrib. He said, Do the Arab fight a fight against him? We said, Yes. He said, how did he deal with them? We informed him that he had overcome those night neighbors and had submitted themselves before him. Therefore, he said, 
has it's actual happened this is actually happened I was like what he we said yes thereupon he said if it is if it is so that is the better for them they should show obedience to him I'm going to tell you about myself I am the Dajjal okay the Dajjal is saying you should obey Muhammad and soon would be permitted to go out and so I shall get out and travel in the land and I will not spare any town where I would not stay for 40 nights except in Mecca and Medina should I read the whole story guys for you anybody getting sleepy this is a creepy hmm? so Muhammad here he fabricate a story he claiming that there is a beast and even the beast prophesying about him but then Muhammad he switch a Jassasa when he want it's a woman when he want it's an animal if we go to Ibn Kathir we will see the fiction story change a little bit actually a lot bit let us go there because I want to show you the description of the beast which they were talking about this is a chapter 27 verse number 82 <clears throat> and the same page where it says that Allah will make all Muslims white very white and all people who like me black and finally I got my wish to come true I will become black and then this is the beast a beast will emerge this is after you know this is the beast huh? it's going to come the beast will emerge but what is the description of this beast let us see <clears throat> okay so the beast is going to hit you with the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon and will make you either black or white as we said but here is the description of this beast which they saw in the island already which is a to totally different story there it says uh, it was also re recorded by Ibn Majah Ibn Juraj reported that Ibn is a Zubair blah, 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 blah. okay describe the beast he said its head like the head of a bull its eyes like the eyes of a pig its ears like the ears of an elephant its horns are like the horns of a stag its neck like the neck of a ostrich its chest is like the chest of a lion its color is like the color of a tiger its hunches like the hunches of a cow meow its tail is like the tail of a ram its legs is like the legs of a camel and between each pair of the joint a distance of a 12 cubit it will bring it will bring out the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face is shining white as a result and there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will spread until his face is a black as a result then the people will gather in the marketplace and they will say how much oh this oh this this believer how much is this oh this believer which means they recognize each other by the color because now everybody is either white or black you do not need to ask him for religion all the black are disbelievers all the white are Muslims so my friend when you ask me about Islam to tell you where is Islam came from I say to you Islam is nothing but a collection of garbage fiction stupidity and you be the judge if you think I was not giving uh, I mean I'm not right in what I said in my judgment 
or you be the judge and as you see I never said something I never showed you something is not written in their books this is the book of Ibn Kathir and the rest was hadith and Quran nothing from my pocket I did not use one Christian resource one atheist resource I did not even use history books to explain to you how in the world anyone can believe in such a garbage religion how you can believe that God there is a God who will make all these believers black as if it's a penalty He's not only racist he's sick stupid what's wrong with being black what kind of God he says that the black dog is the devil what kind of God he says that shaitan is a black what kind of God he says all those crazy filthy which will do nothing to help us as a human to live together so my friend every one of us is being given a gift and that is called the brain and you have it too why you don't want to use it what kind of God he want to give me versions for sex sex slaves for eternity what kind of God he will give me 80,000 little boys to serve me for eternity child abuse even in heaven there is a slavery in Islam and there's a child abuse and slavery what kind of God does God does God make me sick we have enough problems in this earth people have cancer people they have diseases people dying left and right and when the top of that we are cursed by liars who became prophets this is the curse of mankind where people are killing each other for the sake of nothing except stupidity a person who want to commit suicide just to defend the prophet who is no one except a false man stupid man he is not even a qualified to work in the post office because he's not trustworthy and he's a crazy and he's stupid how in the world you people end in such an end to believe in such a man and even you are willing to kill for his sake even after his death I want to say thank you guys for being here don't forget please to download the video as soon as it is a possible we don't keep uh, possible to download because as you know we don't keep the videos in our channel and may the Lord have mercy on us Christ is Lord Islam is false and to read more and to learn more feel free to get my books from amazon.com Amazon Spain France we have it in many languages German etc thank you Christ is Lord again and Islam is nothing but a big fat lie take care